One of the biggest questions in paleontology is how did life on Earth actually begin? It's a complicated one because we need the fossil evidence to construct a picture of how life might have actually started on our planet, and fossil evidence is scant. However, there are some very rare fossils which give us a glimpse into the beginnings of life on Earth. If you want to place a finger on the history of life on Earth, that point of this is where life begins, the Apex Church is a pretty good place to start. Here, some 3.5 billion years ago, in what is Australia today, tiny little single-celled beasties appear. And we find their fossils in these very rare chert-like deposits, ideal for preserving this fine cell structure that might represent some of the earliest life on Earth. Some of the most beautiful examples of early life on Earth are the fossils of stromatolites. These are colonial organisms formed of blue-green algae. Now we call them blue-green algae, which is a bit naughty, for the simple reason is they're not algae, they are bacteria. But they're bacteria that used chloroplasts to photosynthesize to generate energy. So these are some of the biggest climate modelers that we can think of way back in time, for the simple reason they altered the environment completely. They generated oxygen to levels that would alter the whole face of our planet. And for this reason, we should have a great interest in understanding the fossils of stromatolites. This is a beautiful cross-section through a stromatolite colony. It's 1.5 billion years old, all the way from Mongolia. You can see these fantastic structures here, and there's layer upon layer. This is, each of this was a living surface. And because the cyanobacteria that formed that surface mat, as they photosynthesize, they also produce a gelatinous material outside of the cell. This picks up any sedimentary debris that's floating around, because these are living in marine environments. And as that debris attaches to the little mound, it grows for the simple reason it accretes this material layer by layer over year after year. As a function of this, the mounds grow upwards and we see this layer by layer of each of these microbial mats forming a new surface each time it accretes the material from the environment in which it's living. The reason some of these early forms of life could cling on to some of these extreme environments was that they were adapted to do this. They had in their cell walls compounds which allowed them to survive in such extreme environments, such as hoponoids. We do not have these same materials within our cell walls. We use cholesterol to support the cell wall membranes in our own bodies. This wouldn't allow us to live in the superheated ponds that we see in Yellowstone, whereas creatures such as thermophilic bacteria can do so, and they continue to do that even today.